Section 8.2, Multiplication and Division of Radical Expressions. All right, so let's look at some something interesting here. Let's say we wanted to evaluate the square root of 4 times the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 25 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. Now, what if we wanted to evaluate the square root of 4 times 25? Well, that would be the square root of 100, which is 10. So, anything interesting? Well, I said it was inter I think it's interesting. What's interesting is we get the same result. And what we might see is the square root of a product is the same as the product of the square roots. <clears throat> so for example, oh, and so here's the rule. If a and b are non-negative real numbers, then the square root of a times the square root of b is the same as the square root of a times b. All right. And we can actually, sometimes it's necessary to take that in the other direction and break apart a square root of a product. So simplify. What's the square root of 3 times the square root of 20, uh, the square root of 7? Well, that would be the square root of 3 times 7, or the square root of 21. Now we cannot simplify this any further. This is what is expected, not the approximation for the square root of 21. Square root of 5 times the square root of 20, well that would be the square root of 5 times 20, or the square root of 100. But wait a second, we can simplify this one further, since 100 is a perfect square, the square root of 100 is 10. All right, try this last one on your own. Square root of 2x by the square root of 5y. This would be the square root of 2x times 5y, which would be the square root of 10xy. Now, let's kind of take that in the other direction. Let's write this as a product of square roots. So, for example, the square root of 33 can be written as the square root of, well, let's see, 33 is 3 times 11. So this could be written as the square root of 3 times the square root of 11. Now, for 12, we have a couple more choices. Let's see. I could write that as the square root of 2 times the square root of 6. Or, I could write this as the square root of 3 times the square root of 4. All right, why don't you try the other two on your own? All right, 65 is 5 times 13. So this would be the square root of 5 by the square root of 13. Now again, 45, you have a couple of choices. 45 is 3 by 15. can also be written as 5 times 9. So the square root of 5 times the square root of 9. Now, even though sometimes we cannot evaluate a square root by, find, by noticing that it is a perfect square, we say that a square root is simplified when there are no perfect square root factors remaining under the radical. So now the square root of 45 is not simplified. Why not? Well, 45 
can be written as 9 times 5. Notice that 9 is a perfect square. So then the square root of 45 can be written as the square root of 9 times 5, which can be broken up as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which is 3 times the square root of 5, which is just written as 3 square root 5. So square root of 45, not simplified. Three times the square root of five, this is the simplified form. Now, another way to approach this is using prime factorizations. So if we noticed that maybe we didn't see right away that 45 was 9 times 5, maybe we had it in our head that 45 was 3 times 15. Well, notice that that 15 is 3 times 5. And so then the square root of 45 is the square root of 3 times 3 times 5. And notice, again, there is a perfect square. 3 times 3 is 9, and there's the perfect square. So we would have the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which again would be 3 times the square root of 5. So let me try, I'll do one on my own again. The square root of 50. Now I recognize that 50 is 25 times 2. So I would write this as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, which is 5 times the square root of 2. The alternative approach would have been to find the prime factorization. 50, maybe you saw that as 5 times 10. And that 10 is 2 times 5. So then the square root of 50 is the same as the square root of 2 times 5 times 5. There's your perfect square. And so we'd have the square root of 2 times the square root of 25, which is the square root of 2 times 5, which we generally write as 5 square root 2. Why don't you try this next one on your own? Simplify the square root of 18. I recognize 18 is 9 times 2. So, square root of 9 times 2, square root 9, square root 2, 3 times the square root of 2. If you used prime factorizations, maybe you saw 18 as 3 times 6. That 6 is a 2 times 3, and so we have the square root of 18 is the square root of 2 times 3 times 3. And now that you've seen this a couple times, you might say, well, wait a second. Here we have that 5 times 5. We had that pair in the previous exercise. We had this pair, and we got a single 5 on the outside. So maybe I can do the same thing here. I've got this 3 times 3, so then I can pull a 3 on the outside and I'd still have a square root of 2 on the inside. So 3 times the square root of 2, either way. All right, so these are a little bit tougher. I'll do one more on my own. The square root of 112. Now, I don't see a perfect square so easily out of this one, so I'm going to go ahead and use the prime factorization idea. So let's see, 112 is 2 by 56, and that 56 is 2 by 28, the 28 is 2 by 7, I'm sorry, it's 2 by 14, and the 14 is 2 by 7. So then the square root of 112 would be the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. All right, so now each of these pairs I can pull out a single factor, right? The square root of 4 is 2. So that would give me a, sing a 2 times another 2 times the square root of 7 
or four times the square root of seven. All right, why don't you try the next one on your own. Simplify the square root of 180. All right, so let's see. Square root of 180, well 180, um, that's two by 90. The 90 is two by 45. The 45 is five by nine, and the nine is three by three. So the square root of 180 would be the square root of two times two times three times three times five. Using the same principle, for each of those pairs, I can factor out a single factor. So the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three, and then I have that square root of five remaining on the inside. And so then that would give me six by the square root of five. All right, so now what if we have some variables involved? This asks us to simplify, assuming all variables are positive. All right, so the square root of x squared is x, because x squared is x squared, just using the definition. Similarly, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, because x squared squared, remember when you raise a power to a power, you multiply exponents, that would become x to the fourth. Can you determine the next three on your own? The square root of x to the sixth, the square root of x to the eighth, and the square root of x to the fifteenth, uh, I'm sorry, x to the tenth. All right, the square root of x to the sixth is x cubed. Same principle, x cubed squared is x to the sixth. So the square root of x to the sixth is x to the third. And so the square root of x to the eighth is x to the fourth. And the square root of x to the tenth is x to the fifth. You might notice a pattern here. To take the square root of a variable to a power, if it's an even power, you just basically divide the power by two. So what's the square root of x to the sixty-fourth? Now be warned, it is not x to the eighth. Right? Don't take the square root of 64. The square root of x to the 64th power is x to the 32nd power. Remember, that's the square root because what is x to the 32nd squared? Multiplying exponents, that's x to the 64th power. All right, so in the previous exercises, we had even exponents. Now, what if we have odd exponents? Well, the square root of x cubed, well, isn't that x times x times x? And I can pull out a single factor of x, since I've got a pair of x's. And so that would be x times the square root of x. I could have done that alternatively by thinking of this as, well, x cubed is x squared times x. And the square root of x squared is x, so I have x times the square root of x. Similarly, for the square root of x to the fifth, I would have what? The square root of x times x times x times x times x. And so I can pull out two x's. So that's an x squared by the square root of x. Alternatively, the square root of x cubed, I'm sorry, not cubed, but rather fifth, would be the square root of x to the fourth by the square root of x. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared, so I've got x squared times the square root of x. Why don't you try the next three on your own? All right, the square root of x to the seventh. Well, 
So that's x to the sixth times x. I, I prefer the second idea here. So I would write this as the square root of x to the sixth times the square root of x. The square root of x to the sixth is x cubed. So I have x cubed times the square root of x. The square root of x to the ninth would be the square root of x to the eighth by the square root of x. And so that would be x to the fourth by the square root of x. The square root of x to the eleventh would be the square root of x to the tenth by the square root of x. And that would be x to the fifth by the square root of x. All right, and now what about the square root of x to the 81st? Be careful, it is not x to the ninth power. Rather, we would write this as the square root of x to the 80th by the square root of x. The square root of x to the 80th is x to the 40th and still times the square root of x. So now let's look at some more complicated examples. We're asked to simplify assuming all variables are positive. The square root of 4z cubed. Well, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of z cubed. Now the square root of 4 is 2, that's easy. The square root of z cubed, using the ideas in the previous slide, that would be the square root of z squared and the square root of z. The square root of z squared is z, so I'd have 2z times the square root of z. Why don't you try the next one on your own? Simplify the square root of 27r to the 18th. All right, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. And then I've got a square root of r to the 18th. All right, so square root of 3 times 3 times 3, I can pull out a single factor of 3. I can pull out a single factor of 3. And so that would give me a 3 times the square root of 3. And then the square root of r to the 18th is r to the 9th. And so that would give me 3 r to the 9th times the square root of 3. The square root of 20 x to the 15th. All right, so let's see. 20, using a prime factorization, 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. So I'll write that as square root of 2 times 2 times 5. The square root of x to the 15th, I'm going to write that as the square root of x to the 14th times the square root of x. All right, I can pull out a factor of 2. So let's see, I'd have 2 times the square root of 5. The square root of x to the 14th is x to the 7th. And then the square root of x, I'll leave alone. Now I'll put some pieces back together. I'll put these pieces back together. The square root of 5 and the square root of x is a single radical. And so I would write 2x to the 7th times the square root of 5x. All right, and why don't you try the last one on your own? Now would be a good time to pause. All right, so 48... is, using prime factorizations, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. The square root of x to the 13th, let me break that up as an x to the 12th and a square root of x. And I'll leave the square root of y to the 20th alone, since it has an even power. So I've got two square factors I can take out. And let's see, that would give me then 2 times 2 times the square root of 3. The square root of x to the 12th would be x to the 6th. The square root of x I'll leave alone. And the square root of y to the 20th is y to the 10th. Putting 
those square roots back together as a single radical, I'd have 2 times 2, 4, x to the 6th, y to the 10th, and a square root of 3x. As with multiplication of radicals, we have a similar rule for when we are dividing radicals. And it tells us that if a and b are non-negative real numbers, then the square root of a over the square root of b can be written as the single square root of a over b. And as with the, uh, the product rule for radicals, for square roots, we can take this in either direction as necessary. So let's see a few examples of how we can use this to simplify some radical expressions. <clears throat> the square root of 27 over the square root of 3. Now, neither of these are nice, right? The square root of 27 is not a nice number. The square root of 3 is not a nice number. However, I can write that as the square root of 27 over 3, a single radical. 27 over 3 is 9, and the square root of 9, nine is 3. The square root of 23 over the square root of 144, well, this one I can break up as the square root of 23 over the square root of 144. Now, I can't do anything with the square root of 23, but the square root of 144 I can write as 12. So I have the square root of 23 over 12. The square root of z squared over 100, well, the square root of z squared over the square root of 100. The square root of z squared is z, and the square root of 100 is 10, so z over 10. Why don't you try the last one on your own? Simplify the square root of 20 over t to the sixth. All right, so let me first break this up as the square root of 20 over the square root of t to the sixth. Now let's see, 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, and square root of t to the 6th is simply t cubed. And then using that idea, I've got a perfect square, so I'll pull out a single factor of 2. So I have 2 times the square root of 5 over t cubed.